All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So I'm always excited, actually. I've been podcasting for three years. I usually start the show by saying I'm super excited to bring on new the guest co-host, but I'm actually even more excited because I've got a passionate, entrepreneurial, hint, hint, shovel-obsessed woman who's going to be uh, guest co-hosting today. But uh, she's a fellow, we'll just say passionate embodier, I'm making up a word today, who <laughs> understands the importance of living hard, working hard, playing hard. I just found out she's also really passionate about uh, influencers like Richard Branson. That's right, Sir Richard Branson. I've mentioned him many times in this show. And uh, we'll just go ahead and throw this out there because I was considered old when I uh, became a hotshot in my 30s and fought wildfires when I left the corporate space. Uh, but uh, age is only a number of people because she decided to start her own company called Demos. We're going to geek out about that. And uh, she apparently was a little symbolic of a midlife crisis. So without further ado, I had the founder of Demos Collective and some sweet epic shovels, which I also own one of, Susan Piper. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Scott. It's so great to be here. In fact, just as you were doing that intro, I had to stand up because I know we're going to have such an engaging conversation. I just had to be on my feet. There you go. I got to move. I have a permanent <laughs> standing desk and I saw you moving things and I'm like, she, is she standing because I'm standing or she just has to do it? So I just have to do it. So, so you know, fun segue. We talk about lifestyle balance, healthy lifestyle practices and tips. So do you find yourself more engaged when you're standing? Yes. Okay. There we go. Yes. So thank you for doing yeah. that. So that yeah, means, sure. ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be both fully engaged for you. So, yes. Um, yes. Do you normally do podcast standing? <laughs> Um, you know, I, I don't, I've done a couple other podcasts and I was sitting and it just isn't, uh, I just don't think it's who I am. I mean, I think that I'm like not a sitter. <laughs> well, and in on fact, that note. In fact, we could talk about hiring and how I look for runners and not sitters, but I mean, like, I'm not a sitter. I, I, I don't really, not a fan I, of it. I don't really hang with sitters, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, it's funny because my biggest client, uh, I used to be one of her employees years ago. I helped her start her sales rep firm. And then I found out two years ago now. Uh, I had converted my desk here in my home studio into a permanent standing desk. Yes. And she was like, so what do you think of these standing desk things? And I was like, you need to get them. Wait, so she went and bought the motorized ones. So she has the option to sit when she wants. She has the option to stand when she wants. And I was like, you know, you do what you got to do. So, but now her, her whole office has got all standing desks in it. And uh, every time I come there, I always catch her. She's sitting and then she gets up, hits the button, raises the desk up, and makes sure that we both stand there and talk and, and have our meeting together. So awesome. sometimes it takes people like us to influence the others, so to speak. Yes, so, yes. and I, mean, I do have you, a standing desk as well at, at work. Have you taught that kind of uh, best practice to some of your employees? Um, or were some that are already kind of embracing that? You know, we're, a start, we're still a startup. We still perform like a startup. And I guess what I would say is that there isn't a lot of time for like – training you know we're just still we're still like we execute like we go hard and we execute at a very fast pace and i think that it would be amazing to get to a point where we could like step back and like talk about the process and about how people work best we just haven't gotten there hmm. well so let, let, let's just dive into that process okay i gotta just throw right out there okay i've stumbled across your shovel that's right people we're geeking out about a shovel but you have no idea what level <laughs> of shovel this is okay as as a former hotshot wild and firefighter i've I, we literally built some of our own tools to fight wildfires so i grew up on a farm i've been around tools my whole life i even studied engineering before i got into the business space so yeah i'm a geek and I appreciate well-made shit. Like, not, I'm not just saying well-made people. I mean, like, off the freaking reservation, nutballs, hardcore is her shovels. So, and actually, for the video feed, since I'm just giving you such a great intro <laughs> on that, I um, that, for the ladies and gentlemen listening, this Demos, D-M as Mary, O-S, collective.com. You have to go check them out. Um, they've been all over Kickstarter because they have a new shovel coming out. And their website's amazing. They have crazy cool designs. I'm showing some of them right now. I specifically have your first alpha, actually. Did you guys, you guys still selling that or did you guys discontinue that? We've discontinued it and uh, we replaced it with the alpha two. Yeah. And um, we are right coming here. out. Yeah, which is right there. And we're also coming out with a new driveway shovel, actually. So, um, we, we just keep innovating and changing and uh, uh, basically perfecting each tool for the job. And the OG Alpha, actually, interestingly, Scott, ended up being 
largely adopted as a driveway shovel, but it had the telescoping index locking shaft, so yeah. uh, which is a fairly expensive component in our bill of materials. Yeah, this looks so, just like mine. Mine's just a little bit different. I got some red correct. markings on it, more yeah. holes. Yeah. So we ended up deciding that we want to make a specific driveway shovel that doesn't have our telescoping index locking shaft, and that's going to be coming out this November. Okay, but let's just rewind even more. Yeah, like, okay. What, what possessed you? I'm sure you've been asked this on other shows, but I have, you're on my show now. What possesses you? Besides the fact you live in Jackson Hole, ladies and gentlemen, I've skied there, I've hiked there, I've uh, fought wildfire near there. Uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming is amazing. So jealous you get to live there. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it, was it because of the lifestyle? Did you just get tired of snapping shovels, which I've done for years? Well, you know, I mean, it, I always tell people that there were, um, it's a little bit like, uh, it, you know, when you're, um, when you're trying to do dead reckoning, you need to triangulate. There were three reasons, three factors that came together for why I started Demos. Um, and it was the confluence of the three that really created the company. The first one was that I had a company in me. Um, and um, I mentioned a little bit about kind of midlife crisis. I mean, I really had, had done, you know, by gender, I had married out of business school. I had raised three stepchildren and then our us kid together over 20 years. And um, I had been waiting for time to kind of have my career hit. Mm. And, um, and, and, and it was supposed to be there around the time the kids were all sort of going off to college. And, um, and my youngest was actually in middle school when I sort of said, look, I, you know, I think that this is, this is it. This is the time is now. I, you know, my, like a boat in the harbor safe, but that's not what it's made for. So okay. that's the first thing. The second thing is that I had lived in Japan and um, when I lived in Japan, I was an expat spouse. Um, so it was for my ex-husband's job. And um, I am not someone who sits well, as we just uh, agreed, because I had to stand up for this podcast. <laughs> um, and so when I lived in Japan, um, I thought I would work. I used to be in financial services. I worked on Wall Street, on merchant buy side banking. And I thought I would work there, but I didn't have any language skills and I didn't have any domain knowledge of Japanese market. So I was idle, but I wasn't idle. I was studying, I became fluent in Japanese and I taught yoga and I also really geeked out on Japanese consumer culture, which is okay. really about having mono zukuri, which is like the best, most beautifully made thing. And okay. so like you could find an example in all these different categories of like a perfect step stool or like a perfect coffee press or like a perfect um, bike lock. Or, you know, and, and I just like loved it. And I was like, oh, look at this one thing and how well made this is. So mm -hmm. it really gave me a sense. And of course, what I know a lot of people like German knives, I particularly came home from Japan just with two knives, both of which are monogrammed with my name in katakana. But I just love their knives. And it's that whole idea of having a perfect tool, the right tool really was in my head because of Japan. So then the third thing was that when we got back and moved to Jackson, actually, after Tokyo, um, my kid really broke all the lawn and garden tools. And I just was super frustrated with the idea of a broken snow shovel. And, you know, Especially just constantly. Up there. Yeah, there. And just like the whole, like, the, I just felt offended by spending 30 bucks on something and then constantly th throwing it in the dumpster. And so he was using them dragging them out of the garage and using them to build jumps in our yard. And so the other thing was that it was not purpose built. So it no, became clear to me. Dirt jumps with a yeah. snow shovel, not going to well, last. Well, and also, I mean, but also snow jumps because he's a snowboarder. So he's oh, okay. a downhill mountain biker and he's a snowboarder. So this was mostly kickers, you know, for his snowboard. Oh, yeah. um, and, and that's how Demos got started. Really, Demos got started by building the perfect, what we called the kicker tool in snow. We got our start in snow, really innovating from plastic snow shovels into purpose-built aircraft aluminum badass tools that were yeah. perfect for building a kicker. And then your shovel, the OG Alpha, really was a foray into a broader market, which was people want, don't just need a kicker tool, they need a driveway shovel, and then they need a truck shovel. So mm -hmm. that's how we went into the OG Alpha. What ended up happening with your OG Alpha was that we made it out of 5052 aluminum as opposed to 6061. And 6061 is aircraft aluminum okay. and is really the most durable. It's got the best strength to weight ratio of any of the aluminum series. So we use now 6061 in anything in which you're going to have effectively leaching of the metal against concrete. So we've decided hmm. effectively to discontinue a 5052 product, especially with teeth. I mean, it's still it wasn't durable strong enough. as hell. Oh, it I is mean, durable as hell, but yeah. we wanted to do better. So that's, okay. what the, that's what the Alpha 2 is about. 
See, now, I love the um, ingenuity there. Like, you know what? You know you built a badass shovel. But it's like, wait a minute. Can we go better? <laughs> yeah. And so we, we eat our own young, which is a saying I've always loved, which is, uh, I think it comes out of Greek mythology. So it's the whole idea that there was some Greek god or whatever. I don't know. The idea, mm -hmm. though, is that you just have to prove upon yourself your own inventions before your competitors do. And Demo so far has no real, no real competition in what we do well, which is we make the best hands down shovels that are purpose built for any mostly, I would say presently, I would say any vehicle based work because of the telescoping index locking shaft. So well, I love um, the integrated handle. I, I love that. I was like, when I saw that on Kickstarter, I was like, wait a minute, they literally detached the handle, made it telescoping. And I'm like, I'm zooming in when I first found you guys. I'm like, wait a minute, is it plastic? Or did they make it out of the same metal? Yeah, you know, the alloy. I'm like, yeah. please tell me this is all metal. And yeah. I'm like, oh my God, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. And honestly, do you know why I bought the OG? Besides yeah. the fact you had a sale. Uh, but because I was like, you know what? Let me let me start with the beginning. Yeah. I can always level up. And yeah. I love the founding product. But also because I was a Sawyer as a hot shot. Yeah. So you have the, the little saw blade attachment. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. I can integrate a saw blade? So yeah. I was like, wait a minute, can I? Because I I've actually I'm a geek. I warned you. I have a, uh, so I have steel branded chainsaws, right? They're like the elite chainsaw. Exactly. And it's what we, it's the federal government. That's what they give hotshot crews. You get a steel. So I figured out a backpacking system for my mountain biking trails. So I have a Dekine trail builder backpack with a steel MS 180 chainsaw strapped <sighs> in. And I, People are like like, are you mountain biking with a chainsaw? And I'm like, yes, I am. Yes, <laughs> I was like, that's it's awesome. resistance training. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, By the way, we are gonna build, how to mount we're building the shovel, the shovel for that market. What do you mean? Okay, Whoa. so I have. For I'm going to tell you, I have two big hairy. Well, actually, okay, I you're you're familiar with the concept BHAG, big hairy audacious goal. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. so I, I, saw, have, I saw him speak. <laughs> I have two BHAGs, and I may have a third, but one of them is that I am determined to build a shovel that's used by all the trail builders at Red Bull Rampage. Oh, that's a good event. Okay. And it's just because, do you know why? Because I want to. <laughs> well, I, you, you have because, to have personal passion. Because I have personal passion yeah. and it's the right thing and it would make my life oh so special and I want to. I think yeah. it's badass and I want to. Okay, the second thing is I actually want to make shovels that are used by um, tier one special forces. So seal team six, yeah. um, Delta force. Oh yeah. And then this, and then, and then tier two, which is all the other special forces. So I'm very into, um, and then I haven't really decided, you know, the thing is in, in the hotshot space, um, we haven't decided yet how we're going to address sort of McLeod and Pulaski. And or, or, or I'll say we, we were in region three. I was based in Arizona. So that's like yeah. the hottest zone. Yeah. Uh, New Mexico, Arizona is our headquarters. And then obviously once, you know, you know how it is. Once the hotshot season opens up, then we're shipped all over the West. Correct. And uh, a really popular tool that was, well, I nicknamed it the bench shovel, but it's a rogue hoe. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure you're familiar with that one. They basically I take a, a spade shovel, heat it, bend it, cut the tip off, and then they, you know, you heat it, you temper it. And that yeah. thing is, of course, with a nice long handle. Yeah. Uh, because when I started as a rookie, they, they gave me a Pulaski. And I'm like, I'm yeah. six foot four. Holy yeah. crap. Do you do that 16 hours a day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, 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 they know how to break me in right. <laughs> I know. I know they know how to break you in. Well, so anyway, um, I think that we, I, I think that there is, so one of the other things I often tell people, and this is a little bit of jumping around, but um, so being a woman with a shovel company, I want you to know that one of the things I say to people is I say, listen, I play well in the sandbox. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is that I started a company where I don't have specific domain expertise, like meaning that I'm not the greatest digger. I wasn't a hot shot. I haven't been a trail builder. You but, what I, but what I am is I am someone who knows how to pull together a team. And so I do understand that there are some really incredible best of breed competitors or what I would consider other tool companies that I love. And maybe someday there is a way for us all to hang together and share some sales and marketing and distribution in, in a way that really makes sense um, with a lot of integrity and like a lot of respect. So who knows? Um, in finance, that would be called a roll up. Um, and that would be like a financial strategy of pulling a bunch of companies together. Um, the way I would see that being done would be just like the best strategy 
uh, but would combine with implementation of keeping the best of each company's culture. So anyway, just, I like it. I, so I got in my career, when I started my career, I was in strategy consulting at a white shoe management consulting firm called McKinsey. So sometimes, oh, that, thinking McKinsey. Comes, sometimes that thinking comes back to me because it's, I, I think of the best companies and how, you know, they grow either through acquisition or they grow through partnering or they grow through um, opening up new divisions, new markets. So yeah, I mean, we're just, we're just shovels right now. And so some things that get into the sort of swung space get really tricky for us because we have not built out our whole and system. And they get costly. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's smart that you should anchor in the space that really you're standing alone in right now. I mean, Correct. I, I challenge the listeners to go find badass shovels because uh, I did. I, I Googled the hell out of it. <laughs> and I was like, dude, you guys have really created some badass stuff. And you're part of a really hardcore outdoorsy market too. Um, I mean, the racing circuit alone that you guys are connected with, I think is huge because uh, actually most of the stuff I see on your Instagram, by the way, your, your SUV is gorgeous. I love the wrap on it, the logo. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, listeners, what, what Scott's talking about is I have a uh, 2016 TRD Pro uh, forerunner that has got substantial mods. And that's hard to do when you have a forerunner that's already a TD, TRD Pro. So um, it's got uh, total chaos sway bars. It's got 10 inch king shocks. It has a Prince roof rack. It has two rigid uh, LED light bars. It has uh, 285, 70, 17. Uh, BF Goodrich KO2 tires. I'm getting a new rear bumper and spare tire rack. I have a Southern style front bumper. Um, and I'm getting Baja lights in the back for the Rebel. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say, I was surprised you still had a stock bumper on there. I was like, that's going to go next. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. Yeah, because I was, uh, there's your bumper. That's your front end, right? Hold yeah, on. that's the Southern style. That It's just a super minimal front bumper. I like that. That's clean. Nice yeah. line. Yeah, it's just simple. Yeah. And the rear bumper is going to have a spare tire because when we do rally car racing, which is what, so Demos now sponsors the Rebel Rally. And so if you're a woman oh. with a double company, you get to do things like that because that's how I like to live and fuel <laughs> my stoke. And I love it. And uh, that's a 1600 mile endurance off-road uh, navigation rally race. So what that means is it's not like wheel to wheel racing like a Baja 1000. Um, oh, and okay. it has no GPS. So what it means is that you the, I follow the Baja. So yeah, so you're basically we go to Tahoe. You're given these these modified maps that Mapbox out of Philadelphia uh, generates for us, and so it removes all street names and all highway markings from the maps. And then you're given a set of GPS coordinates for the day. It's 200 miles, about 20 checkpoints a day. There's green, blue, and black, just like in skiing: easy, medium, and then difficult uh, checkpoints. And you have to get the greens, and then you have to really try to get as many points as possible because the winners of the Rebel Rally, and it's in its fourth year, tend to get an average score over seven days of racing of about like 94%, which is like wow. basically they're getting like almost everything. And that's, again, all with Map and Compass. And it is extremely difficult. And the woman who started it just won this last year's Dakar Rally. She and her co-driver uh, did about 300 miles a day and 40 checkpoints. And she was trained by Rod Hall, who I'm sad to say recently passed away, um, but is in the Off-Road Racing Hall of Fame. Anyway, it's, wow. it's just a really badass event. So please check it out. Rebel yeah, Rally. So real quick on that. So when you say maps, are you referring to good old fashioned topo? Like you're not right. allowed to do digital? You're not going digital at all? No, no digital. Oh, I was because I was about to connect. I used to travel out to Seattle all the time years ago when I did uh, work with uh, T-Mobile. And we used to do like team building events. We go do geocaching. Right. And that was fun. Like you're on foot, you're hiking, but you're, you are using tech, uh, but you are working with maps and with, with uh, you know, basically you know, GPS points. So, right. but that's, so you guys are going classic topo, which I never probably learned topo until I became a firefighter. That's what yeah. they said. Well, no, no. Least, and this is, go ahead. yeah, this is topo in a way of like, let me just put it this way. Like no binoculars. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, so like you can't even, like, you know how like in sailing, you can have a binocular that has a range finder on it and you can, true. At, you can look at an object in a distance and be like, okay, that's five, five nautical miles away. Yeah. We don't have that. So oh. you really be, you need to have cultivated your sense of being able to observe distances hmm. and like looking at mountains, be like, okay, that's about 
three kilometers away, for example, and really being able to read that feature, like where the ridge comes down and, you know, right off the ridge, there's a railroad track, but it's not, on, the point is not on the railroad track. It looks like it's about 500 meters, you know, west of the railroad track. Anyway, it's just really- I'm digging cool. it. I'm digging it's it. super cool. I, yeah, because I, I, in fire, they said, listen, you have to learn topo because if you're on a long assignment and your batteries die, right? Yeah. Like, what do you got? So you have to, we, we did everything old school because we didn't want to depend on the tech. So right. I was like, oh, yeah. so, but that's, that's a whole different layer. I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are after it. I love it. Yeah. So how many total miles you guys cover on a route like that? 1,600. 1,600. So I did it last year with a, uh, I was actually navigator last year with, to a driver and, um, and Demos was a sponsor of the Rebel, but the vehicle was not quite fully Demos. So this year we are fully Demos. It's team Demos. Nice. Uh, my co-driver works with me at trade shows and is a Demos sales representative and she used to work at REI. She also uh, does some volunteer not-for-profit consulting and is a realtor. She's an incredible lady. Mm. And this year I'll be driver and she's navigator because you know why? She's got young eyes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. You know, you got to get those eyes because otherwise it's for me, thing. For me, it's like, oh my God, reading glasses. Oh my God, distance glasses. Uh, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> I, I, I cheated like rookie year of fire. I realized I saw contacts. So I'm like, if I get a, if there's like a flare up on the fire front, it could melt into my eyes. So I finally, I went and got LASIK when I was living in Arizona and three grand later, I had like fighter pilot eyes. So I was like, sweet, you know. <laughs> awesome. You can navigate. Um, yeah. I mean, well, if nothing else for range finding, that's what I care about. So yeah. But that's, that's sick. So, okay. So let's tie this all back in. So clearly you're a geek about the outdoors. You're, you're into, you're living the lifestyle. I mean, I, I have gone all in. There's no, there is no element of, of Demos that I am not into. Meaning that I am all in as an entrepreneur. I am all in, in the outdoors. I live my brand. I work and uh, I work and play and breathe really, you know, sports that many of our customers uh, also pursue and passion. So yeah, I'm all in. When you, when you launched, were you just trying to target, what was your first market you, you shot for? Like, so our first just, market was, um, was, was basically skiers and snowboarders who build kickers. Really I, I spent 11 years as a USSA ski race coach, so I get yeah. it. I mean, yeah. we, didn't, we weren't doing a lot of the sculpting that a lot of the snowboard parks and stuff do. But right. I can tell you, when, I'm, when it's race day, like the only yeah. thing race crews have, we had the big metal rakes. Cool. So if it was, especially on the East Coast, you'd have, we, we call it the, uh, the frozen sugar day, where you're just, the, the race skis just scraping it off and it's piling it up and it's getting heavy and the kids are light, so they get bucked. So you just, you get some volunteers out there on the course and you're just raking it all off. I can't tell you how many times I would just rather just grab a scoop shovel, go out there and just scoop it off. Uh, it was a lot faster for me. I just shovel it faster than yeah. raking. But that- We do we, have, by the way, you, we do have, uh, we're, Demos is used by the uh, Olympic coaches for- uh, interestingly, snowboard Olympic race coaches for South Korea, Germany, um, uh, the Swiss, the Austrians, and now the U.S. Oh, really? the Canadian. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It hasn't. De I don't have the relationships as much on uh, Alpine racing side. If you think about it, because I, by the way, I'm a snowboarder, and so is my kid. So you, yeah. you know how these are. Like I, well, I'm, no, a I mean, little, uh, my, I'm a couple of degrees away from those folks, but I'm here. In, I'm actually today. I'm in Park City. I'll be heading back to Jackson tonight. But okay. like the U.S. Olympic team is here, and we have given them tools because it is an idea that on training on the on the training day, being able to groom around the gates, our stealth shovel is so perfect for that. Oh yeah, I mean I could tell you. We actually had the snowboarding division. Well, now they've rebranded. Now they're the US, USA SA. Yeah, USA right. SA. And uh, a good friend of mine, we coached together for years. He grew up racing in Europe. And this dude's sick. His son, Kubo, is half the size of everybody his age and body weight. And this kid can outrace everybody. He was shooting for the China Olympics. I don't know where he's at right now. I got to check in now that we're talking about it. Yeah. But anyway, so we, we would share the, we'd share the hill. We'd set a snowboard run and we'd show that. But I mean – Seeing kids race on snowboards besides, you know, the, the stunt world of like, they're, I mean, these kids can haul butt, but yeah, you have bad snow day, stuff's piling up around the gates. You're getting too much berm. You get, kids are getting bucked. You got to clear that snow. And I, know, uh, I, know. I wish I would have had like that nice, although your stealth, stealth has got a straight line on edge on it, right? No, no, no. The stealth has teeth. That's and we make a yeah. stealth pro too. And so what's happening in our line is that we're sort of taking each product and curating it for a specific use. So we're taking a version of the Stealth this fall 
and that version of the Stealth will be for, oh, um, for basically keeping in your car. Now, that's the Stealth Pro S, which we consider to be a driveway pusher. The Stealth Shovel, yeah. which is on the far left, is really the one that is the... Um, is basically for grooming around a gate. So I, I can already probably answer this, double. but I'm intrigued to hear your point. So straight edge versus toothed edge, why? Um, so toothed edge is really for breaking up any ice or hard pack. That's straight awesome. edge is when you want to have like, uh, you don't want to scratch the surface that you're shoveling on. And yeah, you, you just are push. pushing pow powder, exactly. Yeah, like honestly, yeah, powder days, you don't need teeth. No. But I, that's why I was excited because I was, I was seeing, and actually I'll probably get the Stealth too, although I'm, obviously I'm waiting for, you know, the, the latest Delta. again, the I Delta. Because I was like, well, I'm trying to find that perfect backpack saw to go with or without the chainsaw. I'm like, if I could take everything, you know, because I'm a former shot, dude, I don't care. I'll pack more weight on. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, can I strap a shovel on the outside of my trail builder back with the chainsaw on board and have the ultimate, you know, backpack system so i'm still trying to hack can. that okay but that's going to be the delta is going to be 24 by 11 by 3 i bet it'll fit how long is the chainsaw from the chainsaw is actually the on the outside of the bag yeah. so they actually have a uh, extending like um like a pocket right so i still have the main belly of the bag closest to my back then there's an extension out that you need to put a chainsaw into or a bucket and then just uh, strap it, strap it in. So yeah. the chainsaw is on the outside of the bag technically. And then I still have the main payload where I keep my chainsaw chaps rolled up. I have a mini hatchet in there, you know, tuning tools, but I could totally slide a shovel in there. Cool. Uh, I don't think the OG would fit in there right now. No, I don't think so either. But again, so again, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. We just got done hinting. There's another shovel coming. That's yes. right. Ladies and gentlemen, she's already got like, well, hold on, let's, so we just continued the OG. So you got four current models, right? Yeah. Stealth. We have five. Oh. This will be six. Okay, so, so I'm screen sharing right we've now, We've got right? the Stealth, the Alpha 2, the Alpha 2S, the Stealth Pro, the Stealth Pro S, and then we're going to have the Delta. Okay, and so the Delta is five. Yeah, and everything in the Demos line now has mounts, and then everything in the Demos line will have bags. Yeah, so by the way, I, I owned Jeeps my whole life, and currently I just I have a Subaru. I don't have the Jeeps, and I'm going to be getting a Jeep again, but I'm like, dude, I, now I, it just... I just wish I had my Jeep because <laughs> that mount is sick. That's a okay. sweet mount. So the so. mount fits roof racks or spare tire mounts. Ah. And so it's getting really, it's pretty cool. We were just Whoa. at Overland Expo and Flagstaff and I felt like uh, it was really an incredible moment for me as a founder of a company because I looked around and like the Demos Alpha 2 was on the spare tire of the best looking sportsmobile. We were on the spare tire of the Turtleback trailer that keeps again a 285-70-17 on the back of the Turtleback trailer, which is an expedition quality trailer, like a $30,000 trailer, like wow. super cool stuff. Like we were on the back of the best Jeeps. Um, we we're on go fast campers um, and uh, on really cool Tacoma builds. And uh, there was a guy who did a uh, Ford Raptor build um, and we were on that too. So yeah, really cool stuff. I wonder if I can get that sucker on my super rack. Cause I got a pretty beef. I got a, I don't have a cage on there right now, but I actually have a beefy Yakima system with with big you know big bike supports for the for the uh, fatter a uh, fatter support for the mountain bike tires but i got this whole midline completely wide open between the crossbars i bet I'm you like, can because the thing is is that um the bars that uh that the stealth mount uh, and stealth and alpha mount come with fit yeah. any uh any any basically uh uh bar or any pole that's two inch diameter or smaller yeah, that's the standard Yakima round bars. I took the stock Subaru bars yeah. off, put that on there. I've run that stuff on my old Audi years ago. I'm a big yeah. fan of Yakima or Tool. Yeah. I don't care. But, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we play well with those guys. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, why not? Because I, they already have all the rack systems out there. All exactly. you got to do is plug in to an yes. existing proven platform. That's so, right. Smart that's move. Right. That's like, right. like, there's companies out there, and you probably have seen it. They, they, oh, well, why don't we reinvent the rack too? I'm like, no, there's already great racks. No, all right? exactly. <laughs> plug into their system and now you can adapt and say great we fit all yakima or we fit all Thule or whoever else is out. uh rocky mounts i think they're out of colorado rocky mounts has got a good rock out there too yeah so. yeah, yeah yeah cool i yes. mean so with with the d like what what inspired that you've just finding even smaller even more lightweight what was the, what was the inspiration behind going to the next level 
Well, I like a good challenge. If you can, if, 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 a, if a listener picks up on anything from me, they ought to pick up on how much I gamify life and how much I love challenges. So I love the idea that we are reinventing the e-tool that was invented in World War One. That's and, what gives me out. <laughs> and I just think it's just so freaking cool. I can't stand it. And it makes me so happy in my life because the thing is, is that in World War II, people were meant to be on their knees. You know, you had to be low or else you were going to be shot. You were digging with a short shafted tool because you, if you stood up and you had a long shafted tool, you would die. So now a hundred years later or not quite, but let's call it 80. So 80 years later, roughly 80, 90, uh, you are basically looking at having a short shafted shovel for that really is only appropriate for digging a cat hole. And even then you're bending over and okay. you really are not able to use the same shovel for digging a cat hole for camping. Um, and certainly not for off-road. So it offends me that you'd have to have a separate off-road shovel a separate camping shovel potentially, or your off-road shovel would be your camping shovel, but maybe not because a lot of people use an Abbey shovel for an off-road shovel and you wouldn't use that for your campfire. And then- That's at first when I saw that, I thought you were targeting the Abbey shovel market, but then I was like, it's so aggressive. And then I realized, wait a minute. Oh, she's redoing the old school military stuff. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So that we really, the Delta shovel is the Demos D tool. And it's really a modern day reinvention of an e-tool because it is meant to be now, why can't you have a 56 and a half inch long shaft? Why can't you have a full size blade, an 11 by 13 by three inch blade? You can, you know, and the thing is, is that it's still portable because we're making out of 60, 61 aluminum. We're making it in America. Look, the, the e-tool is off patent. These days, all e-tools are made in China. So if you are a person who's going out and working hard with a lot of tools, you may notice that that tool is not super substantial, super durable. No. You're going to be able to break it. And so our whole goal of being, you know, I call it the asymptote, which is, you know, if you're familiar with that, that idea in mathematics, it's that a line will approach the horizon but never hit it, is to be as unbreakable as humanly possible. And yet to be strong and, and lightweight and full size when you need it and then compact when you don't. And so I think it's, and then besides, this is also a three position tool. So you can use it. As I a know. Long. I love that. The you fact that it, it flips a short shafted angles. shovel, or you can use it as a long shafted shovel and then it has its stow position. Yeah. So we're super excited about it. It's, it's really the company's, um, it was, it was a design challenge for us. That's taken, it's been a long time in coming because we wanted to reinvent our connector. And then from this connector system on this, this shovel, we see it being able to make many other shapes, like for example, tra trail builder shapes. So it's just super cool. It opens up a whole new world of possibilities for us and we're just so stoked. And the Kickstarter is gonna be coming live on July 23rd and, um, and we'll be basically selling Deltas for Christmas. And yeah, it's uh, oh, pretty, pretty lucky. Pretty <laughs> lucky that we're manufactured in the United States and we can scale uh, manufacturing. Well, and thank you for that. I, I mean, I'm not trying to bust on the import market, but something like this and as symbolic as, as you just, just explained your passion behind this, like you're replacing an old school piece of military equipment. I mean, I would want this made in the USA. And, yeah. and also, I, I truly believe that and obviously, ladies and gentlemen, I'm actually doing some screen sharing. I'm actually playing a little video that she shared inside of the private uh, Demos Collective. It's a, uh, there's a VIP group if you're a Kickstarter. So, yeah. uh, so if you're a supporter, guys, you can actually go ahead and reserve a spot. And then when it launches, you'll get notified like I am. Dude, look at that mount. Look at that mount. It's so clean and simple. <laughs> Thank God, you. This is, this is like porn. I mean, for, for, for gearheads. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you probably have people around you that talk the same way. I was like, oh my God, look at that. Yeah. They do. They do. And the thing is, is the people who work on the brand, you know, it's fun because I have always really loved people that are just absolutely like, you know, um, you know, the geek out. Cause I do too, of course. Oh yeah. And so, you know, I mean, you saw my car and then, you know, you should see my bikes and you should see my snowboards and like, you know, like, okay, like you come in my garage and there's like, you know, 11 bikes and it's just my son and myself, you know, and people are like, what, how many people live here? And I'm like, dude, anyway, um, We've got people who work on the brand. We have like two Porsche people. And part of the reason why the Porsche people are so interesting is that they just love the fact that that company spent so many years perfecting the 911. Yeah. 
Yep. And whether or not you love that design or not, there is something very pure where they did not expand into other models of vehicles like other car companies did, where they kind of like went straight into making an SUV. It took them a long time to introduce an SUV or any other shape other than the 911. Yeah, that's true. We that's a good point. Keep, we keep going back to our shapes and making sure our shapes are as absolutely as perfect as possible. All the parts. Yeah, it actually, it's, it's funny. Just, I mean only because I'm in your group and I posted this, but I pay, I played that game. Like, uh, where's the demos. So this yeah. is, this, this is, this is, by the way, you talk about garage and gear. This is yeah. barely the tip of the iceberg. I have a 3000 square foot garage. So <laughs> like I, I have the shovel, this, this is the whole new workbench I'm still designing and laying out yet. But behind me, there's only, you can barely see two of the bikes. There's still two more on that wall. There's skis up in the ceiling above on this image. Um, but the reason why I wanted to actually open this up was not just to show the garage piece, but, I wanted to show the the comp comparison. There it is. Yeah. So there's there's your comparison you're describing. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you can watch this on YouTube. It's it's just night and day compared to the old school military, you know, flip shovel. Right? I mean, that's that's like the the hearsay. But I mean, that's gonna be sick. It's just ridiculous. We're just so excited. Yeah. I mean, you guys have also been doing a lot of. I mean, yeah. Look at that. That's awesome. That's totally gonna be. I, I see guys taking out of the back country. <laughs> okay. Well, like, I want you to know where this is going. So that particular article, we finally settled on our brand color. That's agate gray. And that comes from the automobile space. And oh, that, this was the gray you were talking about. That's that gray. Cause I get and the we, emails and all the posts and stuff. And we yeah. are super stoked about that, that, that Pantone. That is a powder coat on top of 6061 aluminum. And it just provides for like, especially like it's effectively I like how it offsets the black, you know? Yeah, you get exactly. The black and the gray. So. Okay, so what's happening though is that we're getting so much demand for, for people to who want even a higher end shovel. Like there's people that just want the best article in the world and they're like, okay, why don't you make that all in Cerakote? So we will. Hmm. We just bought at the factory two CNC milling machines and we're doing a milled aluminum grip. We ultimately, oh. I'm sure, are going to be getting into steel ends because like people like you, Scott, are going to want you're going to want different ends. Like I think that we haven't even begun. So it's what's you starting say to, ends, you mean, okay. The, like the what, like, okay. Blade? Yeah. So this starts to get into like, what if the end of your shovel could have an ax? What if the shovel shaft could be used for an ax head? What if it could be used for a Pulaski? What if it could be used for a spike? You know, people want You're stuff. saying making an interchangeable system. So we're starting to get into the interchangeable system the way we always knew we should. People have, oh, have yeah. finally taught me. I didn't Amazing. know about, you know, I don't have a military background. I deeply, I'm a, deep, I'm a patriot. I deeply uh, honor anyone who's served and uh, am so grateful to their service. But I learn a lot and talk to a lot of people who are either active duty or veterans. And they were explaining to me about mil spec, which is military Yep. specified and certified and the idea of things being mil spec and interchangeable is where we're headed. Oh, if you so right now we're mil spec inspired. I, you know how many, I am so deeply cause I'm, I'm also a CFL one trainer in the CrossFit space. I, I got into CrossFit because of becoming a hotshot. I didn't know what it was in 2010, <laughs> but Hey, rookie year, you find out real fast, but in the CrossFit space, we're just in, the, in that side of the fitness world, the extremes, you come across a lot of veterans, people trying to repurpose their lives, right. making a comeback, whether you lost a limb or not, there's some hardcore guys Hard. and gals out there getting after it. But yeah, sure. if you've served, whether it be fire or military, you understand the importance of quality equipment. Mil spec is legit. There's a lot of stuff that I own that is mil spec quality. Correct. So, and we're, and we will need to work. I mean, we're only, what I think we're doing right now is we're mil spec inspired. And again, it's an asymptote. So we need to move in that direction. That's where we're headed. So these are my big hairy audacious goals, which is fully, fully realizing the product vision of that interchangeable system of heads and grips so that you're really being able to build your custom tool. And it's, so anyway, Cerakote coatings, aluminum milled grips. We do have a customer right now who wants us to make a titanium shovel for him. And I am super stoked on that. Titanium so gonna, is really hard to work with. Yeah, I know, but, but yeah. you know, it's like, he, he's like, I love you. We love what you're doing. For him, money's not an object. And like, he's like, I'm going to give you purchase order. Let's that, just that's, that's a buddy of mine. He has a titanium frame. He had custom made for his road. He has a titanium road bike and he's got a titanium mountain bike. And I'm like, yeah, but why? guess what? We should do it because we do, we have someone that so we'll work with that customer and we'll build that. That'd be a VIP level product. And there are people that will spend the extra coin. 
I mean, there's, there's things that I've spent extra on. That's why, that's why I say, I I, I tried showing your shovel to some friends of mine the other night. They're like, I don't get it. I'm like, you don't have to get it. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, she's not targeting everyone. I, I, granted, you and I are finally having a podcast now, but I'm like, I get you and I get your business. I'm like, guys, like you don't, I was like, one of the rules of entrepreneurship and business success is you don't try and target everyone. You niche down and you figure out your target market. Yeah. And then you own that market and then it starts bleeding into the other markets. Like obviously off-road racing, huge, right? Shoveling mud. So right. huge, right? Huge. But then it's like you start in snowboarding, now it bleeds into skiing, right? Right. So, you know, the snowmobile market. Do you know how many hardcore snowmobilers I know that would strap that shovel in the back of their snowmobile? Oh, we, we already are in that market. And, oh. and in fact, it's, uh, it all started with guys who are six foot three, six foot four, because the Demos is the only really long shovel and many of them are like hey look when you're up okay so i'm gonna name drop, I'm right gonna, here. I'm gonna name drop a little bit i feel a little bit bad but i, I this is super exciting so i told oh, you the name drop it was my demos was my my middle age crisis company so i still get really i just get so excited when we get someone who reaches out who is for example an x-game gold medalist so like Cody Matichuk hit us up. He is an X Games gold medalist in um, the timber sled. And he used a Demos customer because guess what? He puts a kicker. He's a tall guy. There you go. <laughs> so we came a calls like, hey, tell us when you, you know, tell me when you got a trail, something for trail. Like I'm really interested in this. And so, you know, and Travis is still interested. So Travis Rice is a Jackson man. He's just an incredible human being. Um, I can't explain to you how much he has, uh, has really helped me. And um, we're not, we don't talk all the time. Um, he's a very busy guy and got a lot of projects, but like in terms of continuing to evolve a product for his sport, he's always very interested. And so it's just like those kind of guys are just like, make the perfect thing for my sport. So for sure, snowmobiling, timber sled, for sure. We're big in that. Well, basically winter sports across the board. Yeah. I mean, I'm wearing a um, kicking, kicking horse is yeah. by the way, uh, this was the last mountain we hit on my, uh, I had a ski adventure wedding in March. So uh, we, we did heli skiing for our wedding. So lucky, lucky. I, I, that's why you and I are vibing so well. Like we, yeah. we, do, weird, we do weird shit. People are I like, just got back from the Beartooth. Nice. <laughs> my so child you, is, uh, so my son went to the free, Junior Freeride World Tour in Koppel, Austria. And he's the one who was competing at the Beartooth Pass, Beartooth Basin. And so he's sick. been 15 to 18 snowboard. He's 17 now. So this is his senior year. And um, I was super proud of him at the Beartooth because I saw him really charge. Like at the beginning of a run, which is off the cornice, he backed up about 20 feet and he charged it. And he, he sent a huge three in off the cornice. And like in, there's skiing versus snowboarding. Usually the skiing is more exciting in the men's 15 to 18 than the snowboarding. But yeah. I was so excited because it was like that kind of thing. And then a big grab off of a big cliff and a nice method down at the bottom. Like it just, it was great. <laughs> I'm actually literally, yeah, here we go. It's not actually your son doing it, but here is a shot from the Beartooth Basin. Uh, yeah, that's somebody, that cornice. Somebody popping off a cornice. Yeah. Obviously, that's a skier, but who cares? I just want to show the cornice. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> I love imagery yeah. on my video feeds. So Yeah, that's the idea of it. Yeah. Like, again, ladies and gentlemen, this shot doesn't really show, but like the guy, the guy's hucking it off the edge. What you really want to know in cornices, especially somebody like you who's from Jackson Hole, when you're standing above the cornice and then you're about to drop in your butthole puckers, that's the feeling of a cornice. <laughs> and I tell you all the time, if you want to get into it, start in Jackson Hole. People are like, I thought that's the hard one. I'm like, well, that's the point. If you could do Jackson Hole, that you, you, you pop your cherry a little bit, you get into it. Next thing you know, you're, you got a son like, you know, going go hitting Beartooth Basin. So, and how old is he? 17. 17. 17. I was not doing that at his age. <laughs> well, most of the kids have, uh, most of the kids have dads who are like, you know, ski patrollers and coaches. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like always like a little bit like, you know, Hey, go ahead, son, you know, um, send the three, but I'm not doing it. <laughs> There's a lot of parents who live vicariously through their kids, but you, you know? need to do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hey, I, I'll give I got to give props. My now wife, uh, she grew up ski racing. I didn't, I didn't get into ski racing until later. Um, I just was always into coaching different sports and stuff, big into cycling and everything else. Anyway, so her parents, like she grew up like classic ski racing family. Like all the parents all hung out together and they're still friends yeah. to this day, I guess. It's like a thing. That so, is a thing. So like half of our wedding in Canada, uh, in, in, uh, 
in Banff was like old people that I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know them better now because they're all her, they're all like people that she grew up with. But the, the, the cool part was like her parents got on a helicopter and went heli skiing with us. Yeah, and I was like, cool. and they're 70, 71. And I'm like, that's super cool. Yeah, my parents back here in Pennsylvania, my dad's never been on a plane. They don't do anything. I'm the complete weirdo in the family. So, uh, but that's the point. You got to live life, right? And I think that's part of why I've really started geeking out about your brand. And I can't wait for the D to show up. And that's why I already own a shovel. Like, I didn't even reach out to you about a podcast until I bought the shovel and I was in the group and I was on the waiting list. I'm like, I got to get her on a podcast. I was like, more people need to know about badass shovels. So, maybe that's a hashtag. Do you guys use that one? We do use badass shovels. We do. Okay, there we go. I mean, All right. I mean, I think the thing is, is that, look, someone said this the other day and I really resonated with it. It's the days are long and the years are short and you got to live a life that matters. And it needs to matter to you. It doesn't matter what other people think. And I think that, that doing that is the only way to, um, I don't know, to just... You know, I just really encourage people to just really like make time matter, you know, like make these days matter, make this time on this, this planet matter. Well, I, I also will tell you that I'm super excited about something that we do with Demos, which is that we took a category of mostly really uh, dis disposable tools, tools that you would buy and replace and that end up in landfills. And we're really creating a built to last. Like I, I think of us very much as like the Patagonia of shovels, meaning that we should have a worn wear program for our tools. We should have, you should have a lifetime relationship with Demos, you know? Well, you've That's, got a target audience right here because we're huge Patagucci people. That whole thing around like there is an environmental mission, like more people getting out and getting after it and using public lands. I think it's super important. And then they're more likely to preserve the planet. Oh. I think that having a lighter footprint on the planet by manufacturing, manufacturing in the United States and not using fossil fuels to move product to all these warehouses and across the ocean may, makes a big difference. And I think the other thing is, is that we are creating a pro, we are creating a sustainable consumer consumerism. And I love that. Um, and then I think finally, it's super cool that we use U S stamped, uh, aluminum. We use U S cold rolled steel. We're manufactured in a United States factory with, you know, American workers that are paid a fair wage. That all matters. So stable communities create stable, you know, create democracies. Democracies are based on having a healthy middle class. When you can create that I, kind of jobs. We promote like, that all the time. <laughs> it's a huge deal. So I'm just really like, I, there's a lot more about what we do and why that is not just like on the surface evident. But it's that's why I like bring job. entrepreneurs like you on a show like this because yeah, the brands out there, the Instagrams out there, the websites out there, but people need to hear more of the story, more of the purpose behind the purpose. Right. You know, it's like uh, people see my logo and there's fire in it. But then, then once they listen to the show or they happen to dig deeper into my background, I'm like, Oh, cause he's a former firefighter. Right. And it's much deeper right. than that. You know, you got a purpose behind what you want to do. Like I love your tool, not just because obviously badass shovels. Right. But I'm the same way. Thanks to firefighting. I became a bit of a minimalist back then. I wanted like, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Leatherman. I, I had the same Leatherman for 15 yeah. years, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like buy it once, spend a little bit more and you make it last. Like Kristen, my wife, she just sent back her Patagonia. As you just said, your Patagonia jacket for repair. I just sent back a pair of Patagonia jeans. I've never sent back jeans for repair. They fixed them. Like they sent them back. It took a couple of months, but I don't have to go buy another pair of jeans. You know, I yeah. want, I like, the right gear, quality stuff, it's built to last. And if it does eventually fail, does the company step up behind it and take care of it? Cool. Yeah. And then you don't need 15 things. Or to your point, throwing out broken, oh my God, you know how many people throw out broken snow shells every year? Oh every, my God. Oh yeah, no, no. I've been trying to get a photo shoot at a landfill and I just, I don't know why I can't get this. I haven't, I have not yet gotten this done, but I want to have a photo shoot at a landfill in, let's call it February or March mm -hmm. when people have already bought their shovels and they're already breaking. And that's what you see a ton of. And I want that picture of that pile of broken shovels. Cause I know it exists. Oh, yeah. I have friends that work at the transfer station and they, they're like, yes, it exists. Anyway. So I will get that done this winter. Well, right before I bought that shovel, I did buy like last year I bought cause my now wife, when I moved in with her, she had one of those cheap, silver, crappy, you know, snow shovels that just, even the handle twists when you try and use it. I like I, I took a grinder and reground the edge just to get a little more life out of it. And then it finally snapped. So I was like, yeah. I, I don't buy crap like that. So I bought yeah. a very expensive, heavy duty, high impact plastics shovel that is 
durable as hell, not your level shovel because I didn't know about you guys yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> But like, again, that would be like, why would you buy such an expensive snow shovel? I'm like, because I don't want to keep breaking crap and throwing it in the trash. I know. Spend so more we, we are coming out with, I'm really excited about this. We are coming out with a $99 driveway shovel. I haven't named it yet, but we have, uh, we have 100% said, let's make a heritage hickory shandle, handle. Ooh. We probably will do it in different lengths so that you can order it and be like, I want the tall. I want the medium. Because guess what? We ship direct to consumer. We're factory direct. We can do that. We're not like trying to put product in a box and have it fit in a container. So get the right shaft link for your height so that it's ergonomically fitting you. Dude, then, I, I, I go I get, have I have to go get color. dress shirts custom fit. Why can't I get my shovel custom fit? I know. Fit? So we're doing a, we're doing a heritage hickory handle with tongue oil, which oh. is a beautiful finish. You know, it's 6061 aluminum. It's, it's like, it's just a great shovel. So it's going to be an incre incredible product. I'm super excited about that. You, anyway, you're, so you're talking to the right people. I mean, oh, cool. and I know there's a few, I have a couple of brand ambassadors. Shout out to the Strausser project, Brian. That's right. We, we got to talk about this buddy. Uh, <laughs> where he's, he and I met, uh, basically reopening storm damaged mountain biking trails by running chainsaws. And then we've been friends ever since he's been on the show like five times. We've been doing uh, charity stuff, buying bikes for kids with cerebral palsy. Like it's been, and I just started my first 501c3. So I'm going to have my own foundation now. And I just put him on the board. See, it's, it's, it's why I love podcasting. You never know how it's, what's going to happen. Uh, cool. But the point here is like, again, you buy the right stuff. I love the fact you're talking about custom fitting things, making it work for your lifestyle. Um, I mean, here's, I, I just got to show this to you. So on my personal Instagram, not my live the fuel Instagram. So this is our, our after party in Pennsylvania. My buddies bought me the hotshot level steel saw. Like, this is a $1,200 chainsaw, right? So, and my wife's having fun with it. Um, yes. and anyway, but you have to put quality parts on. So I've already upgraded the dogs. <laughs> so again, quality, quality laser cut you know, steel right there. So yes. <laughs> it's like, my buddy's like, dude, I think your soul's already, you know, crazy. I'm like, no, no. why not level it up a little bit more? So. I know. Okay. So that's what we're, so that's what we're doing. And All that's right, what's I'm so cool. It. So Demos is not just me before I know what my, and we're kind of out of time, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I want to just say that uh, Demos has really become, um, I have uh, my, my factory partner, Wayne Watson, who, um, has 35 years of expertise in manufacturing and is just wow. brilliant. His, our senior engineer, John Hopman, and by the way, Wayne's a Porsche guy. Then John Hopman is, uh, is, uh, runs 12 CAD engineers and has been, uh, he can build anything in glass, thermoplastics or metal or wood. And, like um, and he, his ability to be able to take our designs and to rapidly prototype and then cut them into, to, to really, you know, effectively uh, scalable manufacturing is what Demos can do, which is pretty impressive. Um, we've got on design, we've got Jim Barlow. Interestingly enough, Demos' senior designer has an architectural background. Now, really? why does that matter? And it's because the man can design anything. And if you think about that, he's designed homes, furniture, light fixtures. He's built cars, his own car racks, car parts. And the mm -hmm. thing is, is that in the world of design, you might think that a standard hire would be someone who is, who's designed shovels for like another company, but really those people are specialists in designing shovels in Chinese factories yeah. and working with that supply chain. And everything we do is so de novo and, and like white sheet, like just blank piece of paper, blank canvas, that actually someone out of that type of, type of design background makes a lot of sense for us. Plus, he's used to working with high-end finishes, which we do use. So it's pretty cool. And then um, our COO, Scott, uh, Scott Striegel, C-suite level executive, who's worked in digital marketing and is really helping us get all of our operations dialed in our direct-to-consumer model. We're also in wholesale. We're also on Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, then, uh, you know, we've got Daniel Marginian, who's a customer service ninja. We have Luke Harris, who is on our marketing manager. So it's, an, it's really, hef and he's a veteran, by the way, he used to work at Netflix and Disney. So like, it's, a, it's a team of heft. I feel so excited every day to come to work because my colleagues are just so incredible. It sounds strong. like you put together quite the superstar team, you guys. I have a hell of a lineup. I mean. It's a hell of a lineup. I have to yeah. say that. So I anyway. Mean, I'm just really proud of the team. I'm proud of the company. Um, happy to be doing what I'm doing every day and I'm living the fuel. So I'm really happy to be here too. You definitely are. I'm glad you just threw that in there because I was going to work it in myself anyway, because it's, it takes 
again, we talk about health, business, and lifestyle on the show. You, you've, you've, you've challenged yourself to have that midlife crisis and, and create a company that you could tell you're just still a geek and you're still passionate about it. And it's like, what can I do next? What can I tweak next? Like, that's what, that, if, if I could, if one thing could be left behind in the audience, my, I'm picking, I was like that entrepreneurial spirit, it, you have to stoke the fire and the fire has to stay hot. And that's what I got out of you today is like, yeah, you're still mastering the craft, but you're also like, okay, what, once we got that master, what is next? Right. Yeah, what yeah, else can yeah. we think about? So yeah. I love that. Thank you. Um, well, I'm uh, I'm super excited to say that this was a great way to kind of end my work day. And uh, I, I'll be, uh, I'll be coming, leaving, leaving this call and then jumping in my car. And I got a four and a half hour drive back to Jackson tonight. And it'll be just, Oh, you road tripped. Nice. I'm road tripping, right. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. miss, I miss those road trips, man. I've it's climbed so out there, good. hiked out there, skydived out there, everything. So it's, yeah. uh, we, we come out to Colorado every year. We have a house out in Edwards. So, cool. uh, but actually a good friend of ours grew up in Jackson. She's here right now for about a month. So we're going to take her mountain biking in a couple of days. So, cool. well, listen, you I, gotta come, you got to come to Jackson and come mountain biking with us. Oh, I would in a heartbeat. I mean, <laughs> we'll, ride, we'll ride Teton Pass. I'll wear my full face helmet. I have not. <laughs> That's, that would be, uh, why not? Game on. I'm actually Game training on. for, in, in three weeks, I'll be doing my first 100 mile mountain biking race. That's so a big deal. I've never done that. Um, okay, that's a big deal. Uh, I have I a said, friend who <laughs> rode uh, the white rim and that's a hundred miles in a day. And that's a lot. That's a this big is, deal. It's called, I don't know. It's called the wilderness 101. It's the 19th year. It's in the, it's, it's not out West. It's, it's in the, it's in the remote mountains of Pennsylvania. I don't know. I, yeah. I collapsed the lung in January. So I'm in the hospital bed. I'm like, well, I need a training goal. And, decided to do that <laughs> cool. well i can't wait to hear how that goes it's gonna be awesome uh, but hey help you help us close the show out okay. you are the guest co-host you've shared so much is there an all-encompassing message that you would just sum it all up with that you would leave behind for the people listening if they forget all the other little nuggets you've kind of dropped throughout the show today is there something like this all-encompassing out there right now I think it is. I mean, I think it is the single all encompassing thought is um, do something that matters and do it well. That's it. Boom. That's like a mic drop <laughs> right there. Do something that matters and do it well, people. I love it. <laughs> That's it. Well, let's drop the mic on that. Listen, hang tight. We'll give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen. I've said it multiple times on the show. I've done a lot of screen sharing today. DemosCollective.com. There's at least a guy or a girl out there in your circle that is almost as much of a geek about tools and stuff as I am. So <laughs> consider sharing. Uh, go check out the Kickstarter because I'm a huge fan of Kickstarter. As you guys know from past episodes, I've supported many, many products. Uh, crowdfunding is a beautiful and amazing thing, and I wish it would have started years ago. So it's again, not live yet, though, Scott. July 23rd. Okay. Oh, trust me. Uh, well, yeah, but you have the link on the website. We do so have the link on the website. You can reserve early bird pricing, and that's yes. kind of confusing, but it's a way of getting, basically, there's a certain number of pricing in each tier, and so reserving early bird pricing, it guarantees you the best pricing in the campaign. Yes, and that's what I've already done. And actually, ladies cool. and gentlemen, I shared it earlier in the show. I'll share one last time for the video feed. Right there, it's in the main toolbar, Delta Shovel Kickstarter yes. Reservation. You drop a buck, and then as soon as it goes live, you're on the early bird list, and you can buy the shovel. That's what I did. Uh, so if you're a passionate fuel fan, like I know some of you guys are, go ahead and uh, follow suit with me. And actually, make sure you tweet or comment or tag in the Instagram, Facebook world, Demos, as well as me. And let me know if you guys jumped on because I'm intrigued to see uh, who actually decides to join the fun. So, all right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you a proper goodbye off the air, Susan. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Demos Collective, check out the Kickstarter. Get your dollar reservation. Uh, geek out about shovels because I will. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll talk to you guys again soon. Remember, you too can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.